coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. What do you know about radon gas? This was the focus of an informational evening hosted by the Cypress Health Region and the Saskatchewan Lung Association. Following an extended autumn filled with mild days, the Swift Current area received its first taste of winter this week. We've had people here from Texas. We're amazed at that. BC, but many, many communities in Saskatchewan. Thanks for joining us here today. Well, what do you know about radon gas? Health officials are encouraging you to have your home tested. We find out why in our top story. What do you know about radon gas? This was the focus of an informational evening hosted by the Cypress Health Region and the Saskatchewan Lung Association. The evening discussion in Swift Current was led by Dr. Tour, the consulting medical health officer for the Cypress Health Region, and Frank Kirkpatrick, a certified radon expert. An eye-opening discussion, which brought to light that the Swift Current area has a higher than normal rating of radon gas, causing concern for everyone's health. Radon is a byproduct of uranium, which is radioactive, and radon in itself is radioactive too. And what happens is uh, we breathe in radon and you can breathe it out too. Sometimes you breathe it in and you may have a particle of radon that sticks to your lung membranes. And when it breaks down or disintegrates, it releases what are called alpha particles, which is the dangerous components of radioactivity. And those particles can either kill the cell of the, of the lung that they have hit, or damage it and it repairs, or they could damage it and a mutation occurs and it becomes a cancer cell. Radon gas is found in the soil and can penetrate into buildings through cracks and concrete and piping. With homeowners advised to have their homes tested for radon, Test kits should be placed for one month in the lowest level of your home where you sleep. And if the reading is 200 or more, you need to contact a certified radon mitigator, who will then address the problem in the following manner. And the theory of how we fix a house that has high radon levels is we have to prevent that radon from coming through the house. And we do that by giving it an easier path to travel from the soil below the house to atmosphere. So what we're doing is below the house, we're creating a vacuum. And in that vacuum, the radon will gather. And then we pump it off of there. And this pump runs, it's just a fan, and it runs 24-7 forever. And that prevents the radon from entering the house. It oftentimes prevents humidity from entering the house as well, and other soil smell. And health officials are encouraging you to test your home sooner than later. As ongoing exposure to radon gas, can cause serious health issues. As more research is being done, uh, and as you saw in the figures that I presented, um, radon is now the second largest contributor to lung cancer. And lung cancer is the biggest uh, killer, as far as cancers go, uh, in the country. So it is a very significant and important factor. Most people, when you talk about lung cancer, they think, oh, smoking. But no, radon is the second largest contributor. And even worse than that is that if you have both smoking and radon as factors uh, of exposure, your risk multiplies tremendously. As the Cypress Health Region continues its radon home health study, it notes that earlier this year it already indicated that one in every three homes had higher than recommended radon levels. And most concerning is that family members were sleeping in the basement, where radon levels are at the highest. Families with children under the age of 18 may voluntarily participate in this study with a free test kit available through the Cypress Health Region office. And the general public can order their radon test kit through the Saskatchewan Disease Control Laboratory's Environmental Testing Unit. <music> Wishing you the best this holiday season and into the new year. For Mayor Dennis Perot, City Council and staff of the City of Swift Current. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the management and staff of Chinook Refrigeration and Air Conditioning, serving Southwest Saskatchewan since 1976.
Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from David Anderson, Member of Parliament for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the board, management, and staff of the Cypress Health Region. While the first taste of cold weather strikes southwest Saskatchewan, we talk to Environment Canada and find out what's ahead for the coming weeks. Following an extended autumn filled with mild days, the Swift Current area received its first taste of winter this week, with below seasonal temperatures and wind chill values to chill one to the bone. And although Hardy Prairie residents expect the return to cold weather each year, it's still a bitter pill to swallow for the first few days. Given the kind of November you had, which was so balmy, and uh, this is like a slap in the face. I mean, you kind of want to be ease into it and not, uh, not like this uh, night and day kind of situation. Now, the good news, I guess, they're looking for a strand of good news here, is that as we get closer to Christmas, I think a week before Christmas, we will see some moderation. Uh, it may not get above the freezing mark, but it certainly will be maybe milder than you normally would expect for that time of the year. Right now, the normal highs in, in swift current uh, western uh, Saskatchewan should be about a minus 5, certainly not the minus 19, 18 uh, this week, and then uh, minus 22, minus 24 next week. And as the winter season progresses, Phillips reminds us to pay attention to the wind chill factor and avoid such scenarios as frostbite or hypothermia. For workers outdoors, uh, uh, having, you know, breaks, uh, holding recess indoors, for example, for, for teachers in schools, and, um, and just to dress warmly. I mean, we sometimes don't even, uh, we forget that. Uh, and uh, if we can dress warmly uh, and, and, and layers um, and waterproof, uh, I think that makes, uh, makes total sense. And staying dry, of course, we, we know that if you have wetted garments, that can wick away the heat from your body and, uh, and can, can chill you. And keep active. I mean, if you just stand there waiting on a, at a bus stop for, uh, for the bus to come, well, you're going to get colder, colder. So, hey, just maybe uh, jump up and down or wave your hands. Uh, any kind of, uh, of activity that you can do can generate some body heat that can uh, help, um, help the situation. Southwest Saskatchewan generally sees a daytime high of minus 5 for this time of the year with an overnight low of minus 15. And in the coming days, we can see a slight warming trend across the region. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the management and staff of Pinnacle Financial in Swift Current. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Gus, Louie, and George at the K Steakhouse and Motel. Book your Christmas party or New Year's celebration today. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the staff and management of Pioneer Co-op. Celebrating 80 years in Southwest Saskatchewan. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from David Merritt and family. MLA for Wood River. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Dr. Noble Irwin Regional Healthcare Foundation, keeping healthcare strong in Southwest Saskatchewan. Those times when I thought that he was just very quiet and shy and withdrawing a little bit, that he was probably depressed and I didn't know it. And you think that this is a short term thing. In a week or two, he's going to be back to normal. But, uh, that's not the case. With the holiday season upon us, we now bring you a special feature, spotlighting a unique event held in Hodgeville each December. We've had people here from Texas. We're amazed at that. BC, but many, many communities in Saskatchewan.
we started it about eight years ago and uh, in a little community church and after that it just outgrew the church and we came into here so I had originally seen uh, a display similar to this in Edmonton where we lived and then when we moved to the farm I had already started a bit of a collection and the collection just kept growing from that point on for some reason I just had this interest in in collecting nativity scenes so gifts from all over the place and then when we moved here um, met Andrea and she had also uh, stated an interest in uh, collecting nativity scenes so that was where it started from. We uh, start on Sunday night by just placing the tables in the hallway just to see how they would be arranged and then Monday morning uh, a another group of ladies or well us included we come and we start skirting all the tables that's the first thing that we have to do and then once the tables are all skirted then we start putting the different colors of fabric that would match or complement the scene yeah and set the scenes on i think the first year we must have had maybe 120 scenes and it's grown from that Last year, the count was at 650, uh, approximately, and we are certain it will be over 700 this year. Everybody looks for new pieces. All our collectors look for new pieces. And uh, I have received so many gifts from people, uh, from my own family, from, from friends, and from just community people who just say, Oh, I went into the store, I was on holidays in Germany and I saw this little scene there and it just had your name on it, had to get it. And so I myself now have over 200 scenes. Uh, well, I think we counted them just now, it was 225. I guess initially how it started with me getting collectors or getting collectors together was they would have come to our event earlier in, in years past and they would have approached me and said uh, you know I have a collection too and then we would have invited them to come and, and share their collection with us and many of the, uh, the uh, collectors said oh we have pieces that we don't see here and uh, so I said, oh, that would be just amazing to have you come and share them and, and let people see uh, your collection as well, too. Well, in 2005, we visited Europe. We have friends that live there, and uh, there was just so many Christmas. It was uh, in December we visited, so there was lots of Christmas uh, things there, and, and uh, I purchased a few nativity scenes and it was my birthday so I had so our friends and family bought me nativity scenes and so when I came home there I realized oh I guess I'm collecting nativity scenes so quite enjoyed it. Uh, I have about 70 you know sets and, and most of them are small I don't have a lot of bigger sets I have more, more of um, just the, the Mary and Joseph and Jesus sets the three and a lot of them are just one piece. A nativity uh, scene I bought when we were in London, England, and uh, I th think it was in Winchester Cathedral that I bought it. It's actually made of an olive tree from Jerusalem, is what they they told us. So it's one of my one of my favorite pieces, as well. Okay, this uh, cardboard one we're thinking anywhere in the 40s or 50s. We're uh, not exactly sure. We we don't know the story behind it, but I found it in my mom and dad's house when we were cleaning it out after mom passed away and dad moved to Swift Current. And so we were uh, quite excited to, to find something this old. And it's in very good shape. It still has all its pieces and uh, all together. Our friend Evelyn was um, very supportive of what we were doing and sharing through Night Jesus Was Born. And she had characters that she shared with us at our events when we first started our display and uh, since then she has passed away and her daughter-in-law 
found uh, a huge stable and uh, I believe it came from one of her aunts or something like that and it just so happened that Evelyn's characters matched this big uh, display that or this big stable that her daughter-in-law uh, found and uh, yeah it was it's amazing and that has that scene has been with us every year since then it's it's a unique display, and I don't know of another place in Saskatchewan that would maybe be doing this. It was just a dream or a, something that just was twigged in my mind that we should just share with our friends here. So, and we count it a real privilege. It's our gift to our community. We've just insisted on for ourselves just to have it always the first weekend in December. So the Friday, Saturday and Sunday always. We have no cost. Uh, come on in and enjoy it. It's a very warm feeling. It's wonderful to be able to share such beautiful displays and to celebrate the night Jesus was born. It's a very, very good feeling. Our lives have just, I mean, have changed, but we always need to keep coming back. Like, why do we celebrate Christmas? Why? you know what's the reason for it and if we don't have a real basis for celebrating Christmas why do you even celebrate the season and um, I think that to me has meant so much that I'm focusing back on the real meaning of why you know God loved us so much that he sent this little baby to us and uh, through him, we could have life everlasting and peace and joy and happiness. So that's why I enjoy doing it. The town of Maple Creek is Southwest Saskatchewan's hub for holiday shopping and dining, all at a relaxed pace. Several shops are conveniently open until 9 p.m. on Thursdays in December. Maple Creek, the perfect shopping and dining excursion. For more details, check out our website at oldcowtown.ca. During the holiday season more than ever, our thoughts turn gratefully to those who have supported us this past year. In this spirit, we sincerely say thank you from the bottom of our heart. We wish you abundance, happiness, and peace in a new year filled with hope. From all of us at Lens Plumbing and Heating, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.